As Viva reported, the People's Bank of China told the country's largest banks on Monday to rein in risky loans and to improve their balance sheets. And that warning sent a jolt through already shaky equity markets. Joining us to discuss the gyrations in the global markets is John Herman, a U.S. economic and interest rate forecaster and director at Herman Forecasting. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Great to be with you again. So, John, the Shanghai index is down over 5%. You're to date down over 13%. What is going on? Uh, well, there's obviously a, a lot of things uh, working their way through the, the markets right now. And, you know, as you, as you recall, way back in January when we first uh, met and we were talking about this year unfolding, we thought the economy would actually be pretty strong. We thought the corporate profits would be good and the economy would take off. And uh, we were a little bit a ahead of the Fed on, on that call. And so what we've seen now in the last few weeks is the Federal Reserve Bank has now caught up to that kind of view and that outlook. But, but focusing on China, are okay. we seeing the moves in the Shanghai index linked to the Fed or to the credit crunch or to both? I, I think it's uh, globally, we are seeing a repricing of assets globally, partly in response to the Fed, and this is not atypical. We saw a similar kind of move when the Fed shifted to a tightening cycle in 1993, 94, and then 95. We saw the same kind of thing. Global yields went up. We saw also the same kind of thing in 2004, 2005. So this is not unrelated to that, but it's also a little bit more of China focusing really on its own, uh, some own issues that it has and, and own concerns concerns about their, the size of their shadow banking system, about how that feeds into home price appreciation and housing bubbles. So China is really trying to address some of those issues, but globally there has been a move upward in, in, in yields. So can we expect this downward trend to continue in emerging markets, because emerging markets across the board have been in the red lately? Have been hurt very, very badly. So if we could just do one little thing. If we took a step back and said, okay, Chairman Bernanke now has hinted that he, as you said, he wants to uh, take away QE3. Right. Okay, so. Quantitative easing, quantitative the bond easing purchasing in program. In the bond purchasing program. So this is this $85 billion bond. And he doesn't want to take it away immediately, as you're suggesting. He's going to taper it initially and work its way down. And possibly the earliest it could be fully removed would be, say, June of, uh, of next year. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you look at it, the, in fixed income markets, we have repriced our securities not back to the beginning of QE3, but we've repriced them back to the beginning of QE2 back in November 2011. So in other words, our markets have gone in such hypersensitivity to this that they've removed not just all of QE3, but we've removed all of QE2. And Chairman Bernanke said nothing about QE2. So I think the thing is, uh, I think if there's some consolation here, it's this. We have made a tremendous move. I think it's, a, you know, at this point, just a little bit overshooting, and markets could stabilize. So we're seeing a, a correction in equity markets, not the fixed income markets. Is this the beginning of a correction, and you expect the downtrend to continue? I think it, I think it will continue not for, you know, for a little bit longer. We are in a multi-year adjustment with the Fed and with monetary policy, so equity markets will always have to fight that headwind. But I think for now, you know, in terms of fixed income, it's feeding, it started in fixed income, it's feeding into equities, and we've really overpriced a lot in fixed income. I want to focus very quickly on what the BIS said, that the central banks around the globe should really stop with the stimulus, that it should only be used as a measure of last resort when we're on the brink of collapse. Clearly, the central banks haven't heeded that. What do you think? I, my own personal opinion is that, uh, you know, the economies around the world really did face uh, an awful lot of strains. I mean, we had the U.S., we had this big housing bubble burst. In Europe, we've had multiple countries with sovereign debt, sovereign risk that have been unfolding and unwinding. So it's really required unprecedented action just to calm markets, to reassure investors, and to what they, what they describe, what central bankers describe as, to just keep the monetary transmission mechanism, to keep it working normally, or at least as normal as it can in this kind of environment. So I think they've done a great job. Now that said, the US economy is healing pretty rapidly now. So in about a year's time, or possibly you know, a year and a half's time, you know, it'll be questionable whether we really need any more QE. 
And so the fact that Chairman Bernanke is starting to think already down the road and starting to say, you know, maybe we can taper, maybe we may not need any more of this in a year, year and a half's time, right. I think it's reasonable. Uh, Europe still has a lot, a, a fair amount of work to do yet. So, uh, you know, we're not completely out of the woods yet in Europe. Uh, China's making their adjustments. But, you know, okay. all, of, all of our countries, we all face very deep challenges. And I think the, the positive thing is that we are all embarked on a path of trying to help the economy. And uh, in the long term, that's, that's going to be a plus in the long term. Well, as we can see, the mere mention of ending the Huge. quantitative easing has sent markets spiraling. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Thank you so much. Thank you so John much. John Herman, director at Herman Forecasting.